Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 25th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Grant Tange. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, today in the readings we hear that Jesus invites us to follow a path of humility, a path that he himself has traveled on. And we come to his table conscious of his love and his mercy, but also conscious that we have not always followed that path of humility, that path that Jesus himself has traveled. So let us come to his table, conscious that we need his grace and his forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord have, Lord, have Christ, have Christ, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let's raise up our hearts to God as we give Him glory. Glory, glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore, adore you, we glorify you. We, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer, you are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Ungodly men said, Let us lie in wait for the righteous man, because he is inconvenient to us and opposes our actions. He approaches us, reproaches us for sins against the law, and accuses us of sins against our training. Let us see if his words are true, and let us test what will happen at the end of his life. For if the righteous man is God's son, he will help him, and will deliver him from the hand of his adversaries. Let us test him with insult and torture, that we may find out how gentle he is, and make trial of his forbearance. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to what he says, he will be protected. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Behold, the Lord is the upholder of my life. Behold, the Lord is the upholder of my life. O God, save me by your name. By your power, defend my cause. O God, hear my prayer. 
Give ear to the words of my mouth. Behold, the Lord is the upholder of my life. For the proud have risen against me, and the ruthless seek my life. They have no regard for God. Behold, the Lord is the upholder of my life. See, I have God for my help. The Lord sustains my soul. I will sacrifice to you with willing heart and praise your name, for it is good. Behold, the Lord is the upholder of my life. A reading from the letter of St. James. Beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, without uncertainty or insincerity. And the harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. What causes wars and what causes fightings among you? Is it not your passions that are at war in your members? You desire and do not have, so you kill. And you covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and wage war. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. God has called us through the gospel to obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. At that time, Jesus and his disciples went on from the mountain and passed through Galilee. And he would not have anyone know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, the Son of Man will be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed, after three days he will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to ask him. And they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you discussing on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had discussed with one another who was the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve, and he said to them, If anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. And he took a child and put him in the midst of them. And taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Soren Kierkegaard, a Danish philosopher who lived in the first half of the 1800s, wrote a parable called The King and the Maiden. In this parable, the king wants to find a lovely young woman to be his wife and queen. One day he was riding in his city and he came to a poor area where he stumbled across a young woman who caught his eye. He started to visit this area of his city more and more and met this young woman repeatedly and came to be quite fond of her. But there was a problem. As much as he was enchanted with her, 
how would he get her to love him for who he was? If he were to invite her to his palace and shower him or shower her with gifts and with riches, surely she would love him for his riches, which would not be real love. Another solution would be to pretend to be poor so as to gain her interest. And then at an appropriate time, he could reveal himself as king. But again, she would not really love him for who he was, but only for who he was pretending to be. So the king comes up with the best solution. He would renounce his throne and he would give up his kingly role and move into her part of the city. He could live there and work, get to know her, and she could get to know him as he really was. And maybe she could come to love him genuinely. Perhaps then he could marry her and have the love that he so earnestly desired. Kierkegaard's parable is interesting. Perhaps many of us would say that the king is foolish to give up his riches in the hope that he might win the heart of a poor maiden who he fell in love with. Our response might be, but look at what he is giving up for this maiden, his kingdom, his wealth, his social status, all for love. Others might say, okay, yes, love is worth it. True love is hard to find. And in the eyes of many, the exchange of the king would seem wise. But from a Christian point of view, the story is interesting because it could very well describe the sacrifice that Jesus himself makes for us. Christ is the king of the universe who humbled himself by becoming a human being. As St. Paul in his letter to the Philippians says, Christ made himself nothing, becoming a servant of humanity and was obedient even to accepting death on a cross. And why? He didn't just love one person to do this. He loved each and every one of us. The king of the universe wanted to become a human being and accepted death because this was his way of reaching out to us, to get us to love him for, where, for what <clears throat> he truly is. Like the king in Kierkegaard's parable, Jesus was not a king who pretended to be human or a servant or obedient. He actually became human and a servant and obedient, all for us. So in the gospel today, we see that our king who gave up all to reach out to us is encouraging us to follow his example. The disciples are walking along the road and they are arguing about who is the greatest in the group. And one can sense Jesus' frustration. He says that if we want to be truly great, we must make ourselves last of all and servant of all. He is encouraging his disciples to follow the path that he himself has taken. But his disciples don't understand the message. We can see them struggling. In the previous chapter of Mark, Peter has confessed that Jesus is the Messiah. But his disciples do not understand that the Messiah, the Son of Man, has to sacrifice himself on the cross. And at the beginning of the reading today, Jesus is trying to tell them that this will happen to him. But they do not understand that the great person that they think he is will take a humble path. How is it that the Messiah will take a humble path? And the disciples will not get it until the end of the gospel. Until way after Jesus has died, God will raise up his son and glorify him. In this way, Jesus' words become true. The last will be first. We might also struggle with this message in the same way the disciples struggled with it. How can our humble path lead to greatness? We might also criticize the king in Kierkegaard's parable. How can the king give up all his riches for love? But we can be encouraged by Christ, who is the king of the universe, who gave up everything he had 
because he loves us. And he invites us to love God and one another in humility and in service. He is inviting us to do what he did, to follow him, to follow his way. God is not asking us to pretend that we are humble in order to get something from God. God is inviting us to become humble and to walk with Christ, loving him as he has loved us. So let us profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, conscious that God in his love wanted to reach out to us and so sent us his son to become human for us, we can have the confidence to bring our prayers to him. We pray for all those who hold leadership positions in the government of this country, that following Christ's example, they may serve their people with humility and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We think of all those who are suffering financially at the moment as a result of the impact of the COVID pandemic, that Christ may walk with them and give them his guidance and wisdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. The COVID pandemic continues to impact the health of so many in our country. We think of those in hospital, as well as those medical professionals who are taking care of them. That God may grant health to the patients and strength to their doctors, Lord hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We consider all those who are the victims of war. We continue to pray for peace in Afghanistan and for all the families impacted by the events which occurred there at the end of August. That God may continue to be with them, giving him his friendship and consolation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We think of all the bishops from around the world who will begin to consult their local churches in October to prepare for the next Synod of Bishops, which will take place in 2023 that God might guide them through the Holy Spirit in their consultations and preparations. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. Loving Father, we want to follow your Son in his path of humble service. We humbly present these prayers to you, asking that you respond to them in your way and in your time. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May we all accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. holy. Lord God of hosts, in the name of the full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. This is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world 
and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bouti, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with the Spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have no sins. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have no sins. Lamb of God. Take away the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my roof. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the Church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.